So, hey, guys, we are back next level. Got a group Woo! of friends with me here yeah. 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 today. Yeah. Hey, Joey, you preached a phenomenal message just a couple days ago. Fire. Um, called The Crew You Keep, right? About friends and, hey, in the middle of train wrecks, when, when things seem to come off the rails, like what do we actually do with that? And, and what, what, what do our friends have to do when our train comes off the rails? And so, hey, I just want you guys to uh, introduce yourselves just for a quick second. Uh, tell us who you are. And hey, if you could pick one celebrity, man or woman, to be your BFF Ooh. for life, who Ooh. would it be? Love it. There's a lot. I'll go first. Yeah. So. You go first. <laughs> yeah, you go first. That's fine. Here go we go. First. My name is you Ryan Rohan. Hey, uh, my uh, celebrity crush, not celebrity crush, my celebrity <laughs> BFF and crush. Awkward. LeBron James. You know, I love What? LeBron you James. steal mine? I do. We, we can have the same one. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think of an and MJ, Mark MJ's Wahlberg. To go. Mark Wahlberg. He's just shooter. I mean, just love, love the guy. Jacked. BFF. It'd be fun. Wow. Okay, I'll go next then since yeah. you stole mine. Cool. <laughs> Joe Baker, um, I'm uh, one of the pastors here uh, on the Elevate City team too. And um, my guy would be Kelly Slater, professional surfer, okay. greatest oh, oh, surfer of all time. Okay. Also, Shredding I would argue the greatest athlete of all time. Stop. Really? He's an 11 time Norm world Norm champion. Stop. I would want to travel the world with him, hang out in his surf ranch out there in California to surf all day, every day. Hold on, it would hold be on. Great. surf ranch. How does that yeah, work? it's a surf ranch. Is there water on the ranch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a water ranch. <laughs> Too much nerddom. Yeah. Too much nerddom. Hey, can you oh, wow. give us your perfect surfer pose real quick? Stand up. I, I want to see the surfer pose. I mean, it's, of course, just getting shacked. So just like <laughs> down like this. Dude. Yeah. He almost fell over. He wasn't even on a wave. And he almost fell over. I loved it. He fell over in the north. To, the water just coming over. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love okay. it. Uh, my name is Joey McLaughlin, lead pastor. And uh, my celebrity crush is actually Justin Timberlake. So okay. I would love to just team. ball out with JT. He okay. can dance. He can sing. He can act. He can do it all. He's my man crush. So you got to dance. Worm, 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 Maybe worm, another worm, time. Maybe worm. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Can't let us down. Oh, gosh. There it is. <laughs> yes. All right. That's amazing. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Wow. I'm pretty sure. Wow. I think that's like an actual mic drop. Oh. Johnny, don't be afraid. Johnny, don't be afraid. Oh. Uh, I'm, wow. How do you, how do you follow that? Are you scared yeah. to pick yours? A little bit, yeah. Uh, I'm Freddie. I'm the communications director here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and say Tom Hanks. Ooh. I want to be BFF with him because... What in the world? <laughs> he's just like... He just seems like he's just like a man of wisdom and knows yeah. how to do it all. You know? yeah. Also, right, so you've chocolates. got Pass a the friend. In you've me. got a friend in me. Look at that. Praise Community. All right. So, Freddie, give me your castaway pose. What, what's the little volleyball friend? Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> 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 give me your... You're on an island castaway Tom Hanks. Ooh, uh... Wilson! That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm not Went doing any it. role playing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Stacy just leads with no. Fair. No. Fair. Hey, I'm Stacy Jackson. I help out with the creative team and I sing. Baller. Um, my favorite celebrity, I guess, um, singer would be Sarah Bareilles. I'd love to Ooh. hang out with her and pick her brain. I'm gonna okay. write you I won't ask you to song. sing. No, not right this moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. So, Joe, your message, like I said, incredible. Talking about friends, friends you keep. Um, and so, so what, what's something that stuck out? Stuck out about his message in, in your life? What's something you can take away and go, wow, I'll never forget that? Uh, something that really stuck with me, the, the just has continued to come to my mind, mind all week is um, that we're made to be known yeah. and loved absolutely but known yeah. and on. I feel like when I'm sort of the most lost I'm desperate to be known by wow. someone wow. Um, really so I loved that that's really cool I, I think that. something else Joey said um, was when you're when you f I don't know the exact words but when you feel known or really have a true friend it feels like freedom yeah so when you're, when you're fully like authentic and you can go up to somebody and whether you have a great day or bad day or you lose it as a parent or you just lose it as just a human, Absolutely. that person you know, still loves you. And that's, that's freedom, right? And we want to live in that type of freedom. It's yeah. really cool. That's really so good. good. I think for me, what stuck out was uh, when Joey said, the people you're around are the people you're becoming. Yeah. Oh. Um, because... You know, I've seen that in my own life. It's like if I keep hanging around like completely cynical people, I just become cynical. Yeah, you know, good. like yeah, yeah. and so just in general, like when I have the the right community around me that's like spurring me on and encouraging and 
even challenging me. Yeah. Like that's, that's where I, you know, grow and that's where I thrive. Right. So I think that's really good. So, we're, so we're, we're, we're coming, we're becoming like each other, right? Yeah. That's right. So. Yeah. This is awesome. Should we stop hanging out or keep hanging out? That's, <laughs> I mean, I find myself just, I start saying things that Joey says, like, praise the Lord, or, you know, like. <laughs> in season, out of season. Yeah, in season, oh. out of season. Yeah. I always have some weird catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. Joey, what was your favorite part of your message? <laughs> <laughs> a weird question. Um, but all yeah, of it. I, I love it, it because, I mean, man, the truth is sometimes you write messages because it's just part of my job and it's yeah. part of the process and you're just grinding it out and you're struggling with it and you're like, oh, kind of here, here it is. But then you write other messages and it kind of just, man, it damages your soul and yeah. makes you do some yeah. some soul check. Um, and I think it's what, Stacy, exactly what you were saying. Um, I could get real nerdy theological theologically, but one of the most intimate words that we see show up in the Bible is this word known. And it's Adam knew Eve, and it's in a very intimate kind of sexual way. Um, but there's this idea of love and known going together. And um, to be perfectly known would be to be perfectly loved, which casts out all fear, right? Wow. Perfect love casts out fear. So when you're perfectly known and perfectly loved, that's a place where there is no fear. And a lot of us live with so much fear in our lives, fear of being discovered, fear of being found out, fear that somebody's going to see the real us and not like us. And I just started to go, oh man, am I known right now? Wow. Do people know my doubts and my fears and my frustrations and my pain or am I hiding in certain ways? Mm -hmm. And so I think that it, it created in me a longing for even deeper relationships than the one that I have. Wow. So I, wow. I think I'm right there with you. That's really it, good. So is is that why making friends is so hard, right? Like we yeah. would, like some of you got good Facebook friends, friends on social media, sweet, easy. You know, even that's sometimes difficult, right? Yeah. To, to, to get that following. But in my life, like finding good friends or maybe even bad friends, like just anybody <laughs> sometimes seems so hard. Reach. Yeah. Is oh that why my. it's so hard? Like why, why are making friends, good friends so difficult? We're scared. I think what Joey just said, so much of what he just said, like we're scared to be found out, to be known. We're scared to be challenged. Mm -hmm. We're scared um, to open up to people because to be a real friend with someone, you got to know someone. And oftentimes we're scared to share our story or we're not confident in who we are. Yeah. Uh, like wow. to be able to open up to someone because we're like, I don't even know who I am. So I can't open up to you and tell you who I am because I'm still figuring all that out. Yeah. But then there's that fear in that, that we're too messed up to engage in messy conversations. Well, I think maybe even sometimes we're scared to be hurt. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, totally. you know, yeah. I, I like try to stay away from the people that are going to hurt me when actually sometimes those people are the people that are going to grow me, yeah. challenge me or, wow. you know, so wow. that for, for me, it's definitely been that. Because it, it starts off in school, right? Where like, oh, you're hanging yeah. out and you think you have your best friend. Trying to find a lunch friend. table. <laughs> you know, like, and it's just, it's just disaster, yeah. you know, train wreck after train wreck after train wreck and my own friendships. And that's at some point, right? We just go like, you know what? Like, no, like I'm just, mm -hmm. it's just my kids or it's just my wife or it's just my husband or it's just this one guy. Um, and I, yeah. So what would you say to people to go like, don't give up? Like at what point, Joe, do we go, I'm all in. So I need to be authentic. I want to be real. I want to be transparent. Do you wait to the fifth date, right? Or yeah. do you, <laughs> yeah. first date, will you marry me? You know, yeah. like, wh where are we? Well, I think it has to come down. I was just thinking of this. Um, is we've got to define who we're looking for in friends and like what we're looking for in a friendship. Wow. And I think for the, the reason why so many people are so scared and so they're scared of getting hurt, yeah. but then they're also scared of getting let down. Mm -hmm. And then because so many of us are looking for friends to be who only Jesus can be Mom. to us, Ooh, you wow. know? Wow. And so we're okay. looking for our friends to be like a savior for us. And then when they let us down, we don't recognize that they're human, wow. that they are imperfect. Yeah. And so we're looking, and then it always comes back to um, something that is not lined up in our relationship with Jesus. So if we don't trust Jesus with something, we're gonna try to search for that in a friend, in a right. friendship. Oh. And then when they let us down, then we're not going to, mm. um, we're gonna like be super upset and we're never gonna wanna trust another friend yeah. again or whatever. Uh -huh. And so I think defining who you're looking for. And I think that goes to my favorite part of Joey's message, which was, um, who is this crew that we need to have, right? And so Joey gave us like a train lesson. It was great. Um, he, he was like nerding out on trains for days. And then he taught us about the three different types of friends and yeah. crew members that we need to have in our lives. Who are those? Yeah. I just uh, say something yeah. before we go into that. One of the things, I think a lot of people don't know how to be a friend. Wow. And yeah. um, 
one of that can be an advantage and disadvantage. I am all about just sharing with anyone. I, I'm ready to dive into a friendship right yeah. away. But I think a lot of people don't know how to do that. And the question is, how do you learn if you're someone oh, who wow. doesn't yeah. know? No, that's a great question. Like, how do you, if you're not naturally vulnerable, if you're not naturally a share, how do you yeah. peel back that onion and begin to let people see the insides of you? Mm. And I think men struggle with this more mm. in particular than women, where it's like, I don't even know how to tell you what I'm feeling right now. Wow. Like, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. So I think that sometimes being a great friend starts with being a healthy person, yeah. um, figuring out, man, how can I get to a place where I do know the struggles and I do know the doubts and I do know the insecurities and I do know the strengths and I am connected to Jesus so that I can be a great friend. And it's funny how early it starts. Like I'm seeing it with Rawls right now, our little girl, and I'm trying to like walk this line of, okay, where do I teach her to be so unbelievably selfless? Because that's a value for our family. Like we want to be sacrificial. We want to be selfless. We want to share at all costs, right? But then I also want her to stick up for herself. Yeah. Right? And I also want her to not be taken advantage of. Yeah. But wow. wh which, which area do I miss on? And right. we're trying to teach her how to, how to be a strong individual and be a great friend at the same time. And I think that a lot of times habits that we form as little kids keep us from being great friends later in life. Yeah, and you sure. got you to gotta evaluate some of that, address some of that, and go, where, where was I given an improper worldview that's holding me back from being a right. great friend? Wow, right. that's really wow. good. And I think surrounding, um, going back to the, you're going to be like the people that you surround yourself with. And so I think if we want to be a better friend, we maybe need to surround ourselves with people who with are better, better friends, friends too. Right. We can learn right. from them Come on. on how to be a better friend, right? Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, one of my favorite parts of Joey's message was when he went through the three different types of friends that you need to have in your life. Right. And he gave us this lesson on trains and on the different type of crew. Amazing. And so Joey's a nerd, okay? Let's all just address that right now. Um, uh, but it was super, super helpful because I think it painted this awesome picture for us of the kind of friends that we need to look for. Because right. if we're not looking for the right friends, same thing with dating. Mom. If you're not looking for the right kind of person, you don't even know who you're looking for, then you're going to end up with the wrong person. Yeah. And so with friends. And so I love how Joey broke it down. The first person that you need is the conductor. Someone say the boss. The boss. The, the boss. boss. That's what Joey talked about. You need someone who's leading you. And I love this one that we all need someone in our lives who's going to lead us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one, I'll just go through them real quick, the train man. In the, someone who's in the nitty gritty, you need someone who is with you and for you. That's so Ooh. good. So crucial. Yes. And then the engineer, you need someone who knows you inside and out. Does anybody think it's hard to find the uh, engineer? Oh, The hardest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is without yeah. question the hardest to find someone who, number one, you feel safe enough to let in yeah and then someone who's going to speak a language back to you that you can hear right wow. like if you find Ooh. two or three of these in a lifetime you're killing the game mm -hmm. right and so i think that sometimes we got to realize that it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna take some work and yeah. some intentionality to find the engineer but just because they're hard to find doesn't mean that you should give up would you trade that uh name out for mentor is that the sort of thing that we're looking for? I think when I think about it, mentor is more like that conductor kind of role. Mm. That's more the person who is like Agent. leading you. Yeah. Um, because sometimes... Like, it's funny, I think back to a season when you were really mentoring me. Although you were mentoring me, there were these parts of you I didn't want to see because I wanted to, to make you proud. Mm. Mm. So uh. your mentor at times, there can be this wall because you're so desperately yeah. wanting to make them proud wow. that you won't show them the parts of you that are weak. So That's good. I think the engineers almost in this other category, they probably feel more like they're with you and for you, but they've got this component of wisdom. They've got this ability to speak your language where it's not so clear that that they're mentoring you, but it's like this is just this is safe. Yeah. yeah like if you don't well. if you don't have if you don't have this person in your life, you need to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. And I'm really not joking with yeah. that. Like yeah. if you don't have a friend who can know you this well inside and out, where you can lay it all on the table, without a doubt, like a great preventative step in your life is to go to counseling. That's what mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and start there because that's that's a way to get that relationship if you can't find it in mm -hmm. real life. Okay. That's really interesting. No, that's good. That's next level. That's next level. Next yeah. level. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Um, Hey, next level from a, a theological standpoint, right? This word sanctification is kind of like this, this this continual transformation to be becoming more like Jesus. Yeah. 
I, I hope that we, we all want to obtain that, right? Like yeah. we're all like hoping and believing that day by day we're getting closer and closer to Jesus. Yeah. How do friends help us in our sanctification process? What's the role of a friend to help us become more like Jesus every day? I mean, it's, I mean, obviously what we've talked about already, it's like, it's the challenge. It's the like rubbing up against each other, like iron sharpens iron, right? Um, Because if I don't have anyone, if everyone's just like loving and gracious to me, then I'm not going to be called out for my junk. If I don't have anyone calling me out for my junk, then I'm not going to grow and I'm not going to, you know, be able to even see it in myself sometimes. Like, you know, I have so many people here. Like I tend to be like a, a, a yes man. And like, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this workaholic type person, serve everyone, try to be everyone, everyone. And I have so many incredible people here at Stone Creek that are like, Hey, um, you need to rest. <laughs> hey, you need to just slow down, stop yeah. the train, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. um, well, before you become a train wreck, you know, like, and, and I think that's, that's for me, that's part of it, you know. I have a friend that um, we've, we've been friends for a couple of years, but we've just sort of decided to become like sort of accountability partners. And um, I love being around her because she's always saying things about Jesus or um, talking about her life in a, a different way that I don't, I just don't think of. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I think it's amazing to have friends like that, that yes. you're like, wow. what? Yeah. I, huh, I can do that. Or, <laughs> yes. yeah. or, you yeah. know, That's I didn't good. know Jesus thought that about me wow. or, um, so that has been incredible. Stacy, I think that's gold. And, <sighs> Um, yeah. I think one thing that friends provide is perspective. They help you see the world different. We get locked into thinking that everybody thinks like us yep. mm. because that's the way that we think, that everybody yeah. does life like us, everybody spends money like us, everybody views politics like us. Nope. But getting <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but getting a group of friends who think differently than you ensure that you are going to be ever-changing, ever-growing, ever-stretched. The worst thing that you can do is get a group of people in your life who just pat you on the back and yeah. have yeah. a way of thinking. Mm. That's the way that you get stuck on the same page of the same story and you stop growing. But I want people who are always pushing me to to look at the situation different. That is yeah. absolutely wow. gold kind of friendship that you should be looking for. And talking about accountability and and, and having those type of friends that, that will call you out, Freddie. Yeah. James 5, 16, and this is just an incredible verse, right? It says, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. I love this last piece. It says that you may be healed. Mm. James says not yeah, so that not you'll be forgiven. Wow. You're already forgiven from yeah. your stuff. Yeah. So so that the power of confessing my sin and my vulnerability to a friend mm. is not so I can be forgiven, but so I can be healed. healed. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. And so I think in sanctification and becoming more like Jesus, the forgiven part's there, and I'm so grateful for it. But the healing sometimes isn't. Yeah. And the healing isn't yeah. there sometimes because it's just like us and God thing and we're not confessing it to each other. Mm. And once we yeah. confess, wow. then healing in our lives will begin. Yeah, mm. that's good. Wow. So I want to ask a deep question. Okay. Um, I, I want to hear about a train wreck in your life um, that's happened, you know, at some point during your life. Yeah. And how have friends, how did friends come alongside you in that train wreck? And how did they impact you as you were trying just to, just to get out of the fog of the train wreck. Oh man, that's deep. You weren't kidding. I'm not. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll, I can start. I mean, there was uh, a time throughout high school and college. My my dad was in the army for almost thirty years, and wow. um, so as a high schooler, college, early college, my dad was on tour. Like yeah. he was out in the Middle East. And so it was like a really hard time because, you know, it's this pivotal time where I'm like this teenager slash young adult where I'm trying to figure out my life. And it felt like I couldn't get the, the answers right away from my dad, right? And it felt like, oh man, I can't do this. But I remember going to college, finding this community of friends who were believers and loved Jesus, saw Jesus in ways I never saw it before. And it completely shifted my life around. And my, my mom even saw this in me. It was like, I'm like trying to work things out with her, with bitterness that I have because my friends called me out on this bitterness that I had toward my mom. And it's like, wow. oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it's like hard. Like it pushed me to do 
really, really hard work wow. in my heart because yeah. I didn't realize what that did without my dad there. Wow. Um, for so long, I depended on my dad for that. But now it's like I, I know the importance of like community and letting that into the community and mm. ch- them, you know, like you were saying in, in James, it's like the healing started when I got into this community of people in college. So, um, yeah, I mean, I hit a large train wreck where I was like not confident about myself, you know, did, hated myself, like yeah. all those things. And so that community in college really just changed everything around for me. That's cool. Uh, so, yeah, a tra- train wreck for me that I think of first is Kayla and I, back-to-back miscarriages, completely devastating, several years of infertility, feeling like we're all alone. And, um, and I mean, I would say two things. I think, number one, I learned about how hard it is to be a great friend when people are going through difficult things. And we all feel that. Like, how do I love somebody? How do I serve somebody? Yeah. I, asking the question, hey, let me know if you need anything. Nobody's going to ever let you know. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. a stupid question. Um, and I had friends say things like, you know, we don't want to ask about it because we don't want to bring up things that might cause more hurt, that might yeah. cause you to rehash. And I learned just Like that's what, the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you can do. Wow. I would rather relive it than feel all alone in it. Wow. Um, that's good. So, but the way that friends served us well in the midst of it, I don't think Joe Baker and I were ever praying together that he didn't pray and ask God to give us a baby. And I'd say the same thing about Stephen Gibbs. Mm. Every time that we were spending time praying together, they would go, and God, I just pray that you would bless the McLaughlins with a baby. That's what they want. That's where their heart is. Yeah. And so those prayers, not just privately, but out loud, meant the world. Wow. Um, and then friends who would just text Kayla every month and go, is this the month? Is this the month? Like yeah. the ones who didn't give up, right? Mm-hmm. Because <clears throat> it's easy to be a friend when the fallout happens of a miscarriage. Yeah. It's hard to be a friend two years later when we're still not pregnant, you know? Uh, so those who stuck it out meant the world yeah. to us. Mm-hmm. And we're probably like, we got your back for life now. You know? <laughs> so yeah. um, that's, that's what I would say. Mm. And I think too, friends being there, you said it praying, right? Like it's not just being there and asking the right question, but bringing God in the middle of it, okay. right? Bringing scripture in the middle of it. Um, and I, I just hope and pray that like us as friends, when people are going through tragedy, we don't just back away, right? Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of times we use scripture and just like, oh, God, God to work all things for the good. And you're like, uh, you know, but, but <laughs> at, at, some, at some point scripture is great. You know? yeah. and, and during the miscarriage, right? In Second Samuel, David dealt with a baby dying and, and he goes, he was, you know, suffering and he was frustrated. And he goes, can I bring him back again? No, I'm going to go to him. He cannot return to me. Mm. And there's this hope, right? Yeah. Of going like, you're going to see your babies one yeah. day. Mm. And as a friend, and as, as we use scripture, and we use what the stories throughout the Bible of going like, man, we can encourage every single one who has lost a child yeah, or lost a baby good. or had a miscarriage and going like, man, it, this is terrible, but you are going to see your baby one day just like David's yeah. going to see yeah. his. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. What about you guys? Um, I Depression has sort of been this constant thread through my life. And um, uh, just, I don't know, it was probably five or so years ago, it just really hit me where it was something I couldn't get out of. Um, and, um, I, I let, I left, I left my friends, I left my marriage, I left, um, who I, who I was really and everything I believed in left church, Mm. all of it. And, um, I lost a lot of friends during that time, partly because of the way I acted. Um, but a lot of them just, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to deal with my behavior, and um, had one friend who, she just was there. Mm. Uh, She didn't necessarily tell me the things I was doing were wrong, because I knew they were wrong. Yeah. Um, But she was just a constant, Mm, that I knew that person was still my friend. Yeah. Um, And enough can't be said about who you choose as a partner in your life. My Preach. my husband yeah. just Preach. was yeah. a constant, even wow. though I just left. Wow. And wow. he wasn't gonna give up. Wow. And Preach. that is one of the reasons I married him, you know, yeah. the loyalty and the love. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a bleak time 
Um, but I do look back on it thinking that's the kind of friend I am going to be yeah. because I hope that will never happen again for me yeah. in that way. Sure. I know it will not, um, but it will happen for other people. And I want to, yeah. to be a constant for them. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. and, I, and I hope you guys heard that as, as a friend, as, as you're wanting to try to be the best friend, like don't give up, right? Yeah. Like, Think about what your life would be like or would be like if your husband would have given up, if your friend would have given up. Like, mm. you would probably not be sitting on this couch today, right? Yeah. You'd be in a, yeah. like, please, like, that's just, wow. just don't give up. Wow. That's really Joe, what about you? Yeah, I think for me, so, <clears throat> um, Leslie and I, I think back to when we moved here three and a half ish years ago. And when we moved, I think it was, um, so I'm, I love change. I love like making new friends. I can talk oh, to you? a wall. Like <laughs> I, I, I would love to move every month, you know? Hey, if you're needing a friend, <laughs> Joe's available. You, you right got now. a friend in me. <laughs> um, and, but, but my wife is different, okay? And so Leslie, having lived in the same place for 20 years, 23, four years at the time, um, had had friends, lifelong friends. And then yeah. so moving here, feeling like, oh, those friendships, like she knew she was still gonna have those friends, but oh, things are gonna change. Things are gonna be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And moving here, I think was so helpful in a number of reasons. First off, um, being surrounded by friends here. Um, I think um, it painted this beautiful picture of what it really looks like for your friends to help shape you and to make you better friends too. So like, for instance, being friends with Joey and Kayla has made me, so like I, I struggle with being a selfish person. And so Joey talked about his family wanting to be selfless and being here. I remember the first few times Leslie and I hung out with the McLaughlins, we'd get back and be like, why do they love us so well? Like, oh, well, like why, so do they, why do they want to buy us dinner? Like what in the world? Why do they want to pray for us? Like, that's crazy. We've never experienced wow. this. And and so now we're able to see, I think new friends offer new perspective um, that maybe you'd become crusty to because you've surrounded yourself to the same friends oof, with the same friends for so long. Come on. And so I think Rough. I love in your message, Joey talked about um, uh, you have permission to get new friends. Yeah. And it's not like you're giving yeah. up on people. Yes. And so don't give up on them in the mess, right. but you've got to know that like, if your friends aren't pushing you to look more like Jesus, yeah. Yeah. then you've got to get new friends. And so for instance, we have friends that um, from back um, in Wilmington that have, that will still be our friends forever. And some um, that do know us very deeply, but then we've got to recognize that friends that aren't, in proximity to you can't be that, who is yes. it? The, the, yes. the yes. train yes. that's in wow. the nitty gritty of yes. your life. And so yes. you can't rely yes. on friends that yes. you only talk to on the phone <laughs> to, yeah. to hold you accountable and to call that you out so on your good. mess and on your right. junk. And so I think for us recognizing being here, so the kind of the train wreck was like all the new and the different and then having to reevaluate friendships. Mm. And if you don't take time to reevaluate friendships, I think then you're gonna miss out on the benefits that new friendships and different friendships can bring to your life. Wow. Right. So good. Do you also feel like um, friends, certain friends are just here during a season? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like yeah. that has been a really hard thing for me to learn. Yeah. Um, that because I expect, I'm very loyal and I expect to be in it for life. Mm. Yeah. But not everybody is like that and lives change. Right. And, yeah. um, so what do you guys think about that? I think yes. you're spot on. Yes. Yes. It was funny. I did a little ask me anything section on Instagram recently and somebody asked a question about that very thing. And I said, it's been unbelievably surprising to me how some of the most deep friendships I've experienced are seasonal. And I think yes. it's really a grace of God yeah. where he's giving you the kind of friend that you need for the season that you're in. Yeah. Because right. the, Freddie can't be everything, although he's an amazing friend. But the Try expectation to be, but that can't. he's going to be everything that I need yeah. for all of my life is just ludicrous. Yeah. Only yeah. Jesus can be that. Yeah. And so Joe has a certain personality, and Ryan has a certain personality, and you have a certain personality. And I think that God gives us those kinds of people that we need yeah. in the season. And when we begin to see that as a grace, and we are willing to go, hey, maybe somebody else needs them now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe God's using them wow. in somebody else's life the way that he used them That's in mine. It's tough, though. It's very it tough. tough. It's yeah. very, very tough. It's super tough. And and, and I mean, even like the friends I mentioned in college from earlier, I, I only talk to 5% of them now, you know, and, and that's hard. That's something, and, you know, throughout my twenties that I'm learning is like, oh man, yeah, like 
some of these relationships are seasonal and that's okay. And, yeah. and I think like the biggest thing is that um, I've found is that I realize sometimes too, oh, maybe I need to see this, this is good because I've seen in areas of my life where I've had too much dependency on those people. Yes. And absolutely. The Lord's like, hello. Yeah. I'm the one who gave you these people. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. be dependent on him and not the community itself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. It's great that they all love Jesus, but like, you know, what happens when life changes. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's where I had to be careful too. So, and I think, I think that post is just a great thought and it, a statement of, hey, when we, when we enter into the train wreck or where we're just kind of coming out of the fog of the train wreck, yes, we need friends, but first go to Jesus, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Yes. looking back at the train wrecks in my life, you know, for me, the reaction is to call someone and go, what is going on? But the train wrecks that I seemed to, 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 to understand or to for the train wreck to unravel a little bit faster was when I went to Jesus and was just like, man, just me and you, like, I, I don't understand. I don't yeah. get it. Um, I want to go to you first, but also go to friends. I, I remember two and a half years ago, you know, my mom passed away unexpected and, you know, grabbed the phone, called a couple of my friends, called Joey. And I remember we were talking about this earlier, right? Like I was pretty matter of fact, like, Hey man, I just want to let you know my mom just died. Cool. I'll talk to you later. And Joey's like, wait, what? Like, no, like, no, like, hold on, you know, like that. I'm not, and I'm like, but I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to yeah. do, you know? And he could have easily write as, as anybody. All right, cool. We don't know how to handle it. We don't know. Like, all right, dude, have a good day. But like, again, he was able to go like, no, like not, don't hang up. Like, wait. And I'm like, no. And I fought him on it. Like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And he's like, you're, you're, you're not. And you're, not good. <laughs> right. you're definitely not. <laughs> and so, um, man, thank you for that. Like, you know, yeah. look, and I know you're watching, you know, online and you're going like, Man, I want to be in the circle. Like, you know, I I feel like even with you guys, like even yeah, like Stacy's talking, and I'm like, Stacy, we're hanging out. Like yeah, right know, after this, let's right? go. Like, <laughs> oh, this type of environment, right? For me, is going like, man, these are the people I want to keep. Yeah. Like, this is the crew that I want. This is the people I want in my life. And and and, and what happened here, mm. right? Like, what happened here is that we chose to come sit in a spot and not just to go like, hey, camera, hey, people, hey, hey, produce. But hey, let's let's encourage each other. Like let's learn from each other. Let's get vulnerable with each other. And sit on the couch, sit in a room, and make it happen. Hey, and you had the same opportunity. Yes. And and where we find these friends, right? Is like you, you could go online and maybe try Craigslist. Is that still a thing? Like <laughs> oh, roommate, you can don't do it, right? Great. Don't do it. Like what you can do is in a church, in a group. And I get some groups are weird. Sometimes you've had a bad experience and had awkward conversations in the circle or on a couch. But at the end of the day, man, I would encourage. We think we would all encourage you guys yeah. to have this no type doubt. of conversation yes. is to jump in a group. And I yeah. think as you jump and Get, commit to a group, then you'll be able to jump and commit into some friendships that'll change your life forever. For sure. So yeah, and I think what you're saying is a great kind of place for us to land. And that's, if you don't fight for it, you're never going to experience it. Yeah. That's why we've got a value at our church of fighting for relationship because it is a fight. It's not easy. It takes intentionality. It yeah. takes prior to prioritization. And if you don't make it a priority in your life, you're never going to have it and you're going to miss out on so much. So yeah, I'm begging you fight for it. It is more than worth it. Please. Well, hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this this was is fun. awesome. This is fun. So hey, good. thanks for, for watching. Hey, we're doing this every week. Next week, we're doing another kind of round table, hangout, small group, next level about the transformation through the train wreck. And how do you actually find joy yeah. in the midst of the train wreck? Y'all aren't ready. See y'all next week. Joy. Bye.